So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about a pen called the Aurora Thesi. That's the T-H-E-S-I. This is a pen that's been made since the 60s. I think it was probably the most popular in the 70s, but it's still made today. It's a pretty expensive pen, uh, which is why I bought it used. But the, the design hasn't really changed since the 60s. So it's a pretty cool pen. Uh, so yeah, it's called the Aurora Thesi. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. I don't know if it's Thesi or Thesi, but it's uh, this retractable ballpoint pen. It has a little slide mechanism here where you slide this out. And that's the pen when it's ready to use. When you don't want to use it anymore, you push this tiny little button right here and it will pop it back. So it's a sort of pocket style pen, something you would put in your uh, chest pocket or uh, maybe in a suitcase, uh, sorry, a briefcase or something like that. And like I said, the design is basically the same as it's been since the 60s. They have some newer versions and then, you know, 100 year anniversary versions, all these other things. And the retail price for this pen is something like $400. I just checked, which is crazy. But you could buy these used uh, as I, this one's clearly used, clearly from uh, 69 through 79. So it was probably gifted in 1979, 1980, around there. But the pen's been made since the 60s. And uh, anyway, I clearly got this one used, which you could see the engraving. Uh, it's from Aurora. I'd say Aurora is better known for their like 88 line of fountain pens as well as their Hastel line of uh, pens, which I, I really like. And I'm gonna talk about more of them, them more on this channel soon. Uh, but this is the Thesi, this is an A. It comes in a few different versions. It comes in an Eco Steel, which is kind of Aurora's main thing. Comes also in a silver, and I believe there were some gold finishes. And it is a, a oblong pencil. You can see it, an oblong pen right there. You can see it's relatively flat, or it is flat on the sides and rounded on the top and bottom. Roughly rectangular, has a little metal cap there, a tiny little clip, which is okay to put it onto like, you know, two pieces of paper or something like that, but it won't work with a, uh, you know, putting it in your, it'll work with a shirt, but not definitely not your pants pocket. Little plastic pieces right here. And at the end, it's a lot like the Lamy Dialogue 1, where it has, a uh, pointy front and the uh, sort of plastic internal parts, even though it's a high-end pen. And here's that slide. Here is the, obviously it's a ballpoint refill. And here's how you put it back. You can see the button is very tiny. You can barely even feel it, which I guess is the point, but you have to really kind of mush your finger in there to push it down. Anyway, so. There's the clip. Like I said, it's quite useless. This pen could clearly use a cleaning, uh, but uh, cool clip, but not very useful. Nothing on this side, nothing on this side, obviously aside from the clip, nothing on the top. You can't push that in or anything like that. And on the bottom, we see the, uh, the aperture for the refill and then just that kind of that plastic there. Here is the release for the refill and the button there. Here's another button here. And when you press this, it will remove the front piece. And it's a little hard to get off like this. So what you could do is push this piece out. Now you push this piece and this piece removes quite easily. And now what we see, we have, uh, this is just that front stopper for the refill. And then here is a refill I made for it. I used a cross ballpoint refill because the, uh, the Thesi uses an Aurora ballpoint refill that is actually kind of a pain to find and it's not a popular size. But I looked at a picture online. I saw that the cross refill was really close to it. I cut it down the shape. You can see I did a, a really poor job with that cut. I don't keep like a hacksaw at my desk. So I did a really bad job cutting it, but it works. And then I created this little wing here by just getting a, uh, a Leatherman type tool or a wrench or whatever I had lying around. And I, uh, I just gave that a squeeze, not a wrench, a pair of pliers rather. And I just gave that a squeeze. I created that little wing and uh, with some trial and error, it worked. That way I didn't have to spend, you know, 10 bucks on a specialized refill. I don't really care about the money. It's more that I didn't want to wait to get it at my house. Anyway, so you slide it back in and you put this housing here 
and you slide it in. And that's basically how the uh, Aurora VC works. It's nice metal body. Like I said, Aurora is really well known for their eco steel, but they do also make a lot of these out of silver, and that'll really affect the price depending on which one you get. The uh, Hastil, H-A-S-T-I-L, is a pen I've talked about on this channel before. That's really the pen that Aurora is better known for, and that has a really nice fountain pen and, okay, and an okay ballpoint. This is a, you know, a cool pocketable ballpoint, but not one that gets a whole lot of attention except from a small number of you know, dedicated Aurora fans. So you can find these online if you're looking around on eBay and other places. And you could get one for about maybe uh, like 60, 70 bucks. You know, so obviously something like this would be cheaper because it's kind of beat up and it has the engraving. Anytime you see an engraving, it's uh, gonna lower the value, even if it's something cool. It's hard to have an engraving that's cooler than you know, Ferrari, but uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna lower the value. So like I said, I don't have the original Hastel refill in here, but uh, we'll just do a quick writing test. So basically, it's you can do it with one hand. You can extend it, but it's not that easy because it requires a fair bit of pressure on this very tiny little slider here. And I could tweak the spring, put a different spring in there, and it won't require quite so much pressure, but I want to use the original spring and... I guess I could have moved the wings on that refill back a millimeter or two, which would require less pressure to push it out, but clearly I didn't do a great job with that. So anyway, here's how you would write. You have to hold it like this. I guess theoretically you could hold it like this, but then you're like, the refill is down below your, uh, your center point, like what you would expect it to be, which I found to be awkward. So I tend to use it up like this. And again, that's exactly how the Lamy dialog looks where it has an angle up and the pin sort of pointing out the top instead of the center. That's the dialog one, which is the ballpoint version. So this is the Aurora VC ballpoint. It's not sold in a uh, pencil, it's not sold in a fountain pen, nothing like that. Just is, this is a specialized ballpoint pen. And this is using a, just a standard uh, cross black ballpoint refill so don't judge the feces ink quality aurora's ink quality based on this refill it's just happening something i happen to have lying around in my desk but anyway that's how it look to write it's a little bit uncomfortable you know it's fine for jotting notes but it's really quite thin and again it is on the tall side so like it's thicker vertically but very thin on the uh from a width standpoint so you're sort of pinching it you have to keep your finger at the top to control it you can see uh i don't know it just it's fine for note taking it's very cool it's something you want to take out of your pocket uh but not something i could write with for an extended period of time and then just on a size standpoint these are half inch markings so we have one two three four five and a quarter inches uh, this is a, a uh, Schieffer, a Schaefer Sentinel, which is a smaller ballpoint pen. It's a little bit smaller. And then we have, here is a Sharpie S-Gel. It's a little bit bigger. I'm trying to see what is a good comparison here. And here's like a Pilot Friction about the same size. So actually the size of this from a length standpoint is pretty standard. It's just that it is uh, kind of skinny and uh, makes it a little bit uncomfortable to use for extended periods of time. But again, this isn't something you'd write a term paper with. It's just a very cool, very stylized classic pen with that cool, you know, modern 60s, 70s design. Anyway, uh, that is the Aurora Thesi. Cool pen, uh, very collectible. Aurora is definitely, I would say, from the like serious collector type brand. It's a great one. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to show is that right there. Let's see if we can quite make that out. There's a little imprint there, and that says 925, which would be the uh, 925 is a sterling silver. Like that's the, so it's a sterling silver 
pen, not the Eco Steel, and we could tell from it has that discoloration that's pretty standard with sterling silver. So I should use some silver polish and clean this up, but that's 92.5% sterling silver. So that about covers it. That's the Aurora DC ballpoint pen. Thanks for watching.